Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel on this beautiful day. Today we're going to talk about uh, variables. Now I know we did that in the last video, but we just briefly went through integers and stuff like that. So if you haven't watched that, just go ahead and do that. Go check out the first one as well because we talked about the output stream. So that's important to know. So what you want to do in this tutorial is, just like in the last one, you want to comment out all of this code so just mark it all and press this button up here if you're on Visual Studio so you'll just mark all that out if you're not let me see just press shift and alt and your up arrow key until you're all the way up and then just make two slashes or whatever this is and that makes a comment just like we talked about in the last video so you comment something out and once you've done that that's the reason we do that because we don't want two main functions in our program so you just we're gonna make a new one so you make a new file again cpp i'll call it tutorial two three two and then you can call it whatever you want um i'm just doing that because i want to keep some order in here and now let's make some beautiful code happen let's see let just save that save that all right we're going to talk about variable variables like i said so just include io stream because we're going to have to print them out Remember, this was in out stream, so it's for our C out and C in functions. Uh, then just make an int main like that, and then return zero for the exit program, right? And we're gonna use system pause just like that. Um, boom. And I know when I was learning, I always wanted to know why we weren't using using namespace std. Now I talked about this in the last two videos as well, but I think it's worth mentioning one last time because we have to write stdc out and stdsyn every time, c in. And if you'd want to skip writing this, you write namespace. But I don't recommend this. It's not good to learn as a habit in general. So, but for this video, we can just use that uh, just for demonstration purposes. All right, let's see like where to begin. So we talked about integer in the last video, and that's a it's actually integer, but short for int. Uh, let's make int i and set it to zero. Now this is called, like I said, initializing a variable. Now there's a lot of stuff in the sentence, right? Initialization and a variable. Now our variable is this whole thing, and this is initializing it because we don't have to set a start value for that, for this variable or any variable. But if you want to do it as at the time of creation, you want to set a variable to some specific value, you can do that. And that's called initializing it. A variable is just that. It varies. All right. So you create it here. Remember, we're going uh, left to right and then down. So just remember that left, right, left to right and then down. So this has been created now in our code. Now below it, we can use it anywhere below it. We can use it. Um, now, if it's in the same scope, now remember, scope, important, just remember that. We'll get to that a little later, some other videos where we start about talking about functions. But for now, we're all good. Uh, we'll just talk about variables. So now we created our variable. We initialized it and we declared it. Uh, and it's done. All right, now we can set i to something else down here if we want, whatever the hell you want to do with it. You can set i. Uh, equals to some arithmetic um, statement like 20 34 plus 5 and that will set it to if my math is correct 39 right so 39 and 20 will be gone just like in this line 0 is gone so this is the final value of i right but we'll just remove that for now or actually we can do we can do that 34 plus 5 then you'll see you can initialize it to some weird value you can keep going six divided by two and stuff and we'll talk about integer division soon because it's a little different but let's keep going then you have double double d equals 30.5 whatever we'll say 30.5 um whoops let me see move that there we go now this is a double precision variable Oh, there we go. Double precision. It stands for double precision. That means that it will keep up to two decimal points 
of precision and everything else will be kind of rounded down so it's a good variable for precision right if you want something really precise to calculate with you can use a double but they're a little bigger all right they're a little bigger than something else which are called floats so floating point variables are something that can hold a bunch of different types of uh, excuse me types of uh, decimal points right now you're like what the hell this is more precision right because you have more numbers but really when you're calculating you get big numbers sometimes it, it gives you errors so it's not always good to have especially if you're trying to say oh is this variable equals to zero now that's a really precise calculation right it has to be exactly zero and floating points aren't really good for that so they're not always zero when you think they are but that's good to know floating point variable there we go um, so yeah that's an integer double floating point now we'll go to char char is a character and a character holds a certain character right it, it can hold a whole line of characters like this it can just hold one and that's because they're actually holding a number which refers to a something called a ASCII table. All right, so this is a ch char character ASCII table. So it refers to that and the code for C is some number. So I don't know what it is. We can say A because I know A, uh, it's 97 I think, but that's a small A, yep. So the number 97 in a character variable represents a small A on the in the ASCII table. So it's gonna just go and grab that. Uh, so yeah, it, it just holds one symbol. It can be something else. It can be a point. It can be something else, right? So anyway, we'll keep it as an A. Uh, now you have all these different variables holding different things. Now something really important to remember is I can't just put a character in something in that is an integer. All right, this is a type. So the way this works is you have a type, then you have a name, then you have a value. So what you can think of these as actually shapes, right? So certain shapes that can only hold things of different or the same shape, right? And just one. So you're just going to hold one value in each of these. We'll get to arrays later and they'll hold a whole bunch of values of the same type, like a big box with a bunch of smaller boxes. But this is just one little box with a certain shape. Um, just remember that. Um, so there you go. You have all these important ones and these are standard types so they come with the language no one has created them in that sense it's not something custom built it's built into the language now you have other types which are kind of considered standard and those are a little more complicated so I'll include string string is very interesting because string if you create a string value you actually have to write std in front of it because it's part of this std package but since we in you included std here, using namespace std, we don't need that. Uh, so we'll just make a string. And it's basically like a character. It can hold a character, but it can hold a whole bunch of characters, including namespaces. So I'm just going to write a sentence here. Hello, I am a string variable. Just like that. So this is going to hold all these small characters. Now, like I said, this is actually internally an array, a big box that holds a bunch of these smaller characters within it in a certain order. So that's good to know later on. Uh, we'll go through those a lot later, I think. Uh, string variable. So this is actually green now because it's kind of a class that someone has made, but it's so standard that we're using it as a standard type. Um, and you can actually, I think, do it without including string as well. But this include gives us a bunch of extra functions that we can use from the string library. So that's good to have. Just remember that. So we'll go there. We have a bunch of different characters. Let me see if I, I forgot a really important one, I think. I'll put it up here or down here. It's called a bool. And a bool can either be true, if I can spell true or false. Boolean variable. True or false false so there you go so that's 
either going to be a 1 or a 0, right? So 0 is false, or anything less than 0 or equal to 0 is false. Anything above that is true. So if I write some big number here, it's going to be true. If I write minus something here, it's going to be false, no matter what I do. Or 0, it's going to be false. But you can give it a value like true or false. So if I just say false there, boom. Here we go. And we're going to print all these out, and we're going to see what variables we get. Now, before I do that, I'm just going to go ahead and go overboard now and tell you guys about something important. That is that there are different types of these. You can write a, you can make a short int. Short int. You can make a long int. And you can make a unsigned int. Now, this is, this is something you don't have to learn right now. This is kind of complicated because there's a type and there are different var variations of it. But let me just tell you that short is what it is. It takes a lot less memory and it makes the limit because there's a limit on how big these variables can get. Now, an integer can be quite big, but if you make it short, it can't be that big. It can be a little smaller, but it's going to take a little less memory. So if you're storing something you don't need that much space for, a short is good. A long is the opposite of that. So it takes gives you a little bit more room to work with. Unsigned is also like a long. It's, it makes the integer long, but you can't store negative values in it. It's from zero and up, but the up part is a lot more. So you can go up a lot higher. But on a, in a regular integer, you can go down some big negative number and the same number but in a positive range so that's good to just remember we'll go through that stuff later as well so don't worry um, so we'll go let's just try and print these out so let's say let's start off with st oh I don't have to actually here we go see how see how I and line or new line because I prefer to write a new line like that boom so what if we just run this it's just gonna crash or is it going to work? There we go. So 39, right? 39. My math was correct. We're down at 39. So that's perfect. That's good to know. Now, what if I do this? This is also good to check. If I give it a decimal, like why can't an integer have a decimal value? Now you're 34.6. Now you're thinking it's going to become 35, right? Because it's going to round up. Nope. It does something called turncation, so it just removes this completely. No matter what it is, it's not going to round it up for you. It's not going to hold your hand. It's not going to help you out. It's just going to say, nope, I'm just going to remove this ugly decimal point from my beautiful body, and it's going to be just whole numbers. If you do a double, though, you're going to get your beautiful number with you, 30.5. 30 and if I just make a bunch more, it's going to round it up, I think. Nope, it just it keeps that. That's kind of that's kind of cool. I think it keeps it the precision precision is internal. No, yeah, exactly. There you go. So thirty four point uh, thirty point five four five four. But what if I do this? Let me see. This is actually new for me too. Thirty five point five. Okay, wait, let me see. Let's let's do this. There we go. Yep, it rounds it up for you. There you go. It rounds it up for you. So that's good to know. A double will round it up for you. Uh, so let's just keep that that way actually it's good to know that's good to know so rounds up the number for you while the integer turn Kate I think that's how you spell it uh, cuts off the decimal there you go and a floating point number if we just print that out an F uh, it's just gonna actually cut it off as well that's kind of weird it should not do that but it does and it rounds it up for you all right I'll have to check on that later we'll talk about that later but it for now it rounds up the number for you there you go all right so we covered all that now the character is a little interesting this is what I want to show you now if I write it out just like this in the stream we're gonna get uh, let me see C there we go we should get an A, a small A. Yep, we did. What? Let me just see if I'm, yep. All right, so what if I do this? If I say 97, a character, 97, that's kind of weird, right? Is it going to print out 97 as a character? Oh, no, it printed out an A. That's because it goes to that ASCII table and it checks what 97 is, what code that is. So 
that's really good to know sometimes you can play around with that a lot now if I print out B is it gonna print out false what is it gonna do nope a zero just like I said so a zero is a false and a one should be I guess a one right of course obviously let me see this is what I want to show you true there you go now this should print out a one yep so in that in that sense you can check sometimes if something is true or false if a statement is true or not so B let's do this as well before we start B equals B equals I equals 34 so this is kind of interesting what the hell is happening here well B is a boolean it's either true or false right something can be either true or false now it is equal to this statements result so the 2 equals to signs which we'll talk about later it it checks for something if it's equal to something else 1 equals to sign assigns something from the right into the left now don't think about this too much but it's just a fun way you can play around with it so if i equals 34 if that happens if that is true or false that will be stored in this variable so if i print out b now it should be 1 yep it was true but if i print out if I say 30, whatever, 35, then it's going to be zero. Zero, because that statement is false. It's not correct. I is not 35, it's 34. So just remember that. That's kind of cool to know. Uh, a string as well. Let's see. So a string, there's a lot more to talk about. I'll make a whole video on strings later. But it prints out the whole variable, just as a string. Now, what if I say uh, string dot length what if i want to know the length of the string then you just have a s dot length we'll talk about this as well later on so that was 29 characters long so there you go that's about it i want to talk about i just want to give you an in introduction to this this is actually a function which we haven't talked about yet it's a bunch of stuff you can do with the string a bunch of functionality you can check you can add stuff you can do whatever you want with it just like a lego piece all right so there's a bunch of stuff, feel free to read about it, but don't freak out because it's not that important right now. So hopefully now you know a little bit more about variables. Uh, obviously if you make two integers, integer b equals 36, then you wanna just print the i plus b, for example. And you can't add all kinds of variables together, but Often you can. Let me see. Why didn't this not work? Let me see. I plus B. There we go. Let me see. Should work. Wait, that's kind of strange. Let me see. What if we say I plus 20 and then print out B? This should work. Yeah, that no, that didn't work either. Okay, whatever. You know, it doesn't really matter right now. From double to flow okay there's some issue right there but whatever don't think about that too much but still you can add two different variables together and print them out and you can just play around with it see what's going on i'll check the error and i'll tell you guys what it was in the next video but for now thanks for watching take care best of luck and i'll see you guys in the next one all right bye bye